women. Do all women think the same? <laughs> uh, okay. You know what? I'll watch this. So this is Jubilee video. It says, do all women think that the same? I mean, like, here's here's my question. Who cares what women think? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who cares? <laughs> so, but uh, we're still gonna watch it. Telling a woman she should do something is actually anti-feminist. <laughs> What do you mean, bro? I tell my wife all the time that she should stop talking to me because I'm not listening. We're told all the time from so many people what we should be, how we should act. So the question in itself goes against what I believe as a feminist. Anyway. I actually do know how to change a tire. I taught myself how to change a tire. And mostly because it's very common sense. I, you put the jack onto the car, you jack the car. And now I know that you're probably sitting here saying, Poppy, you should know how to change a tire. You're a man. I didn't have a dad, okay? So give me a break, okay? Three, two, one. <laughs> like, I know, like... How do you somewhat agree? That's weird to me. The step one through five, but like... Yeah, YouTube tutorials. They got YouTube's how to do it. And they have this one channel where the guy's like your dad. He's like, hey, I teach uh, men to do things because they don't have dads. It's like, made me cry. To actually do it, I don't think I could like be all Papa Cut fans think the same style. Enough to just do it, you know? I wish. Yeah, I didn't know there were five steps anyway, so that's why I'm here. Like, <laughs> no. I have changed my tire multiple times. <laughs> that is... <laughs> just shows that I'm not a great driver, but I learned myself and I had to because I popped my tire a lot. Very cool. Ooh, this is an interesting question. What it, what an interesting question. And it's so interesting because I've never thought about it. We've never I've never like really been asked that specific question. I mean, obviously I disagree. And I'm not even like trolling. I do disagree. There are some things that you should probably teach differently. Um like here's the reality. There are going to be double standards in life because generally men and women are different, especially as they get older, right? Um, see, if somebody said, no, I don't, I wouldn't be against your answer, I guess. You know what I mean? I, I personally think like, yeah, like I'm probably going to, I guess the word should is, is where I, I mean, like, should you? I don't know, maybe, but I wouldn't, I, if you have a different perspective, I wouldn't mind it. I mean, I'm going to teach my kids a bit differently. Like I want to teach my young, like I want to teach everybody to be respectful, but of course, like there's different parameters that come along with being like a man. I mean, like, I think that f fundamentally you can't say yes, because we have, we, we need to like raise kids to understand consent, for instance, but we kind of need to raise them in a way where they understand it a little differently. Kind of usually men are going to be the more dominant figures boys grow up to be men and usually they're the ones that are going to have issues with um creating comfortable environments for uh usually women they usually because you know uh to feel comfortable like saying yes or no in um and so like it's something that you need to teach both of them about consent and you should teach both of them like the same things but you need to kind of emphasize it more for the the, the more dominant role uh that could potentially abuse their stance and even if it's unintentionally they could they could even unintentionally abuse their stance as a uh, as someone that's a more uh, dominant. You know, you'd be surprised how many times I've heard the story from from women where they said they were in a situation with a guy that was when they were younger <clears throat> and they didn't want to do anything. And the guy's like, "Oh, let's do something." And they're like, "No, I don't want to do anything." And the guys be, are persistent because we teach men too much to be too persistent. And I think that um, explicit material, you know, the hub. Also, I think that type of content can uh, definitely use kind of blur the lines on what proper consent is and isn't, because you know everything in there is very sensationalized and like you know, uh, yes means you know, no means yes, and, and when it comes into that category, <clears throat> but. Um, where like they were being persistent and the girl said no, but they gave in because they felt unsafe and they know they were violated, but like they couldn't, didn't feel like they could like just walk away, you know what I mean? Or be like, no, I'm going to stop and disengage. So, you know, there's obviously very unique instances when it comes to man versus woman in life, generally speaking. So like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? There are things that you're probably going to have to teach differently. But again, I, if you said no, I don't think you have to teach him differently. I, I would be, I would understand, you know? It's just a very interesting question. Three, two, one. 
there shouldn't be any, any difference in the fundamental life things that we all should know. And I think that if we were all raised the same, there wouldn't be pay differences. Like we'd all have this, we'd all be on the same slate. So maybe I'll switch it to agree. <laughs> what do you mean if we were all raised the same, we wouldn't have pay mm -hmm. There wouldn't be pay differences. Like we'd all have this, we'd all be on the same slate. So maybe I'll switch it to agree. <laughs> I don't know what she means by that. Does she mean that if we raise everybody the same, then like there wouldn't be an imbalance of the way that women are paid? Or does she mean if we raise everybody the same, everybody would have equal opportunity and there wouldn't be so much like pay disparity? I don't really know what that answer means, because um, like when you when you adjust for like uh, the, va the the variables like, like hours worked and, and jobs hours worked jobs work et cetera et cetera time taken off, uh, women make about like ninety eight to ninety nine cents on the dollar. It's not actually like eighty percent. It's something something like that. Men tend to work harder. Men like to like not work harder. Men tend to be more like ambitious. Uh, women tend to not be as ambitious. Like this is just the, the, the I'm not saying women aren't ambitious. My mother was incredibly ambitious and she worked her way up through the company. But like, for instance, I like to work and make money. My wife, like she enjoys working too, but she doesn't really want to like move up in her company. She's happy with where she is. She likes doing what she does. And I think that like generally speaking, women, uh, women are a little bit more. Um, I don't know if it's programs, if it's socially programmed or if, it, if it's genetic. Uh, but they seem to to focus more on doing something that makes them happy rather than doing something that may pay as much, whereas men, you know, do something different. Uh, obviously, that was a weird tangent because that had nothing to do with the question, but like her answer was bizarre and open to interpretation. So I actually don't want kids, but if I were to decide to do that, I would want them to, to grow up in that environment where there's no difference between you two. You don't have like a curfew that she doesn't have or vice versa. Oh, like that I agree with. Like, yeah, like generally speaking, like you raising the same. It's just like the nuances, I guess, that where I would disagree. But for the most part, like, yeah, for sure, you know. I agree with you, but I also think that we half like where we are now we wish there was a perfect world so we want to raise our kids and say treat everyone the same yes absolutely you treat everyone the same but recognize that not everyone believes that way and like if we teach our boys the responsibility that they have not taking advantage of someone when they've had too much to drink yeah yeah i was pretty much saying that exact thing before yeah i agree i, I just think that there's an awareness that you have to teach boys being men and also girls like becoming women yeah, the different struggles that they're going to face in society and you do have to raise that's actually probably the most concise way to say it uh, you should raise boys and girls as um similarly as possible but you also have to explain to them the unfortunate reality of life and the different the different experiences that they're going to have and the different obstacles they're going to have to overcome generally uh being a man a man versus a woman like there's going to be unique experiences that both of them are going to have to deal with in different ways and you should teach them that to prep them to be able to deal with life that's fair. That makes that's probably the best way to say that. Every woman should be a feminist. Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on what feminism means to people. Um, I mean, what does it mean to like be a feminist, though? The advocate of women's rights on the basis of equality. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Should they? My mom wasn't a feminist, but she was a very strong... Well, she is alive, so she's a very strong woman. My wife's not a feminist. She's a very strong woman. Um, They're very respected in their fields. Uh, respect, respected fields. <laughs> Do I think you'd have to be a feminist, like an, act, an active advocate? I mean, I, I think that there's still room left for feminism to exist, but those rooms are a little bit more niche. Like, women are generally paid the same. Honestly, I know that you don't like to hear that. In most industries, they are. It comes to, honestly, it's at these higher up, like more managerial positions. And part of it is like sexism within businesses. But part of it is also that women aren't taught to be advocates for themselves because, that you know, it's considered too bitchy, which would be a way you like you have to teach women to be stronger and stand up for themselves more starting younger. Um, I don't know if like you could be like, I don't know if you need to be a feminist. Like there's another issue is um, there's a massive uh, like 90 percent of autoimmune diseases are like women are the ones with them. And there's like a profound lack of funding for autoimmune diseases. Although I think like breast cancer awareness is also like the top funded thing. Um, and that's predominantly affected. Like women are predominantly affected. So, you know, a lot of the areas where there needs to be feminism is it's a little bit niche. So I don't know if every woman necessarily needs to be or should be a feminist. Uh, and I only say that because I don't think everybody needs to be an advocate for everybody. But I might be wrong about that. Three, two, one. 
I mean, I guess you, everybody should. I don't know. I guess I'm coming from maybe that's too practical of a position because they're asking an ideal question, like an idealic question. I just think that feminism in recent years have just become extreme. Well, it's like the 60s. It's, it's like, like if you're a feminist, then like you're anti-man. Anti -man. Like why, what? Yeah. Like, you know. I don't think it should be anti-man. Yeah. I think we should all be empowering men to support women yeah. too. Right. And bringing them into the conversation. I think that's right fair. now feminism is like, we don't need you, but right. we do. I agree with that, but also I think that women have been put down for so long that we kind of need to go a little bit extreme in the opposite direction just so that we can come to the middle because otherwise the men aren't going to meet us in the middle. Well, feminism by default is sort of the idea to make decisions for yourself and what fuels you and telling a woman she should do something is actually anti-feminist. <laughs> so, <laughs> because we're told all the time from so many people what we should be, how we should act, how we should address, how we should communicate. So the question in itself <laughs> Yeah, it seems like, like new age feminism is about putting like men down. Uh, I think it's because it's usually like a younger like people on social media that haven't actually struggled. And so they just want to bitch and moan about shit that they want to identify with that they ne they can't necessarily identify with. That's why you notice like older feminists are they're more, I guess, understanding of the way the world works because they're actually advocating for things. Whereas younger feminists, they haven't really identified with the oppression. I think that this is a common problem. And I'm not saying oppression doesn't exist, but you, you notice that uh, people, the, 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 the less oppressed somebody is, um, like if you notice somebody online, you'll see like an eight, like a 16 year old girl and be like, oh, we need feminism. I hate men, blah, 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 blah. Um, those people reasonable art to, to, to consider. They are not, they have not felt anywhere near the level of oppression for being a woman as like a 40 year old woman who's like a legitimate advocate for, be, uh, for, uh, for, for feminism. And it's because, um, a lot of times people are hearing like, Hey, these are the struggles. And a lot of the younger people aren't necessarily have not necessarily gone through those struggles. So they're imitating the way that they would feel if they had gone through that struggle. And then they're using that to like, you know, be hateful and, and identify with an oppression that they can't necessarily identify with. Uh, you know, and I'm not saying that's everybody, but that seems to be the trend on a lot of young people in general, in general. You can say the same thing about anything, even like men's right advocates. Like, you know, like you'll hear a lot of young men be like, oh, I'm oppressed because men um, like, oh, I'm oppressed because there's like these strict societal standards for men to, you know, do this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, well, you're 14. So like you haven't experienced that and you're, 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 you know what I'm saying? And you're, you're acting as if you have. And that's, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make. It goes against what I believe as a feminist anyway. <laughs> And it tends to, uh, unfortunately, force people to tune out from the conversation about these things. Because, like, yeah, pa message, the palatability of your message, the, the the way that you communicate your message is important, whether you like it or not. You have to, like, you know, push a, a palatable message. You could be like, well, that's not fair. Maybe not, but that's the reality. And the younger people, who, again, are not usually nearly as oppressed, tend to kind of ruin the message for other young people to, to listen to. I believe abortion should be legal. Sure. Three, two, one. Oh shit, she slightly disagrees. <laughs> I wonder what that means. Uh, I think it's circumstantial um, because I do believe there are instances where if the mother is um, going to be severely harmed by a birth, that that is where abortion would be okay in my belief. And I think it also, the exception also would be in the cases of rape. Um, but all other circumstances where you made a choice, I'm pro pro life. I think we all deserve a chance at life. So I definitely second. I don't, bro. I wish I was never born. <laughs> in that, I'm obviously pro-choice, so. I agree with that statement, but I feel like the heavy restrictions that are placed on it by our government, just dictating what we can do with our bodies is really infuriating. And then seeing people who have kids and resent it for the rest of their lives and raising children that they never wanted, it's, it's frustrating. And so do you think that those parents that are struggling with raising their children, that they didn't have the option for adoption or other ways? It depends. Like for a lot of cultures, adoption is not okay. So they would not be able to do that. I don't mind strangers flirting with me. I don't. But I also feel like as a man, we're we're more open to it. You know, like, because it's not as uh, intimidating to us. Because it's like, oh, what are you going to do, bitch? <laughs> You're hitting on me? I could, I could rock your world. Literally with my penis, but also like with these fists if I don't like it. <gasps> you know what I'm saying? Well, I can't do that because then I'll socially be damned forever. But... Uh, I remember when I was younger, a little bit younger, I was at the buffet with my mother and this older guy that was my mother's age was walking his mother who was in like a, a walker and had a helmet on. Uh, I guess she was really old and prone to falling. Uh, he was walking her back to the table and she turned to me and looked at me and she said, oh, I, if I were, uh, you know, 30 or 40 years younger, I'd have you for a fortnight. 
which um which apparently is actually a word. I forget. I think it's twenty days. I don't remember exactly or fifteen days. I don't actually remember. And I thought that was pretty cool. It made me feel good about myself. But I imagine that might be really uncomfortable if it's like an older man doing that to a woman because you know double standards do exist and you know old men are just creepier. I guess I don't know. Uh, you know, fourteen Three, days. Okay, two, thank you. One. So what was the question? Flirt. Oh, I was flirting with you? I guess that, what does flirting mean? If somebody complimented you, is that flirt? I guess it is a form of flirting. I guess it depends on how aggressive the flirting is. Tastefully is the word that I, that comes to mind. Like I That's enjoy fair. a tasteful. You look what you fantastic, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, true. that's cute. That's if it's cute. wanted, it's fine. But then, like, you can't mind read. How would you know? We've all had like bad flirting. Oh, I mean, like, if someone's like, "Hey, you look really good today," I feel like that should be fine. You know what I mean? And if they try to touch your booby, you smack them. You know what I mean? That's obviously too far. Experiences. But then, like, I'm thinking, there's a couple I've had where they're like, "Excuse me, I just want to let you know you're very beautiful. Please have a nice day." And What's wrong with that? And I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> You know, and like something like that, that's like short oh, okay, and sweet and okay. there's no expectation. I, I think that's the thing. I mean, that's fair. And I'm from, and I'm from New York. So I'm just like automatically on autopilot. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Like my whole life you have the cat calls, but you have like the derogatory. I fucking, I, I agree with that, bro. That actually, I can identify with that. Just leave me the fuck alone. Don't talk to me. Listen, I hate to be an asshole, but today I was at the, uh, I was at my, I was at micro center. And I love. I actually like that a lot. It's a bit of a drive, but I enjoy going there. They have some really good stuff. I need to pick some stuff up so I can do my podcast with my wife. And we're gonna change it in the settings to like a couch style, so whatever. And uh, I went there. I picked out all my stuff. I had my fanny pack on. It was pretty cool. I get to the register, and the lines are like long. They take a while because the people take so long. Well, that turns out the reason it happens is because everybody that works there is a fucking nerd. So I get up to the thing, and I'm like, "Hey, what's going on?" He's like, "Hey, how are you doing?" I was like, "Not too bad." Little conversation, not a big deal. Not a big deal at this point. So I had a decent amount of stuff. Forgot my bag in the car. I asked him if he had plastic bags. And he's like, I don't know if it'll fit everything. It only fit like a couple things. I was like, no problem. I'll take the plastic bag still. Now, it wasn't behind the register. If I had known, I would have just bought the reusable fucking bag because I really just want to get out of there. I want to go home and I want to work. I need. I have work to do. And <laughs> like, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. Walks around the register though, goes and gets it, comes back, notices that I have a My Hero Academia uh, tattoo of a character named All Might, for those of you who don't know. Now, I know all of my viewers are nerds, so you probably know what uh, My Hero Academia is. Um... But then he starts striking a conversation up about it. I'm like, oh, dude, you know. And um, he he he's, he strikes a conversation up, right? And he's like, oh, have you ever? And I have an All Might tattoo. I I don't know which leg is it on. I have an All Might tattoo, right? So he's like, oh, have you ever met the voice actor? The first thing he said, unprompted. You ever met the voice actor of All Might? I was like, that's a bizarre question. I was like, no, he's Japanese. I, I, I don't live there. He's like, no, no, no. The, uh, the American guy. He's the same voice as Vegeta. Now, instantly in my head, I'm sitting here. I'm like, bro, you watched, you watched the dub. You're fucking, you're mid. You know what I mean? Like, you're mid. You're a fucking loser. Uh, but I was like, oh, yeah, no. He's like, really great guy. Now, mind you, I don't mind some conversation while you scan my items. Wasn't scanning any of my items. I was doing this. So he's telling me about how great of a guy is. I was like, oh, that's cool. And I'm sitting there. And he's like, yeah, he's a really good guy. And he tells me a story. He's like, oh, well, you know, the guy's really cool. Like, he'll give out free autographs. But then if his agent walks up, he'll be like, he'll make him stop and you'll have to pay for him. I was like, okay. Like, thanks for the information. Um, he still hasn't scanned my items. <clears throat> uh, we, <laughs> you know, we continue the conversation. And then he's like, yeah, yeah, I like the voice actor a lot. I, I, um, and I, I had mentioned to him, because I was trying to be nice, that I only watched the English dub when with my wife because I rewatched it with my wife because she doesn't like the, the the you know the subtitles and you know that obviously keeps the conversation going. Then he tells me that he stopped watching the show when the main when the character All Might became less impactful because he lost well something happened. I don't want to ruin it for you if you stupid nerds haven't seen it. And I'm just sitting here and I'm like, first of all, that's really weird. Second of all, you haven't scanned any of my fucking items. And, like, I want to fucking leave. Like, stop talking to me. And I'm not trying to be a dickhead. I don't mind, like, conversation. But, bro, I'm online literally for five minutes. The line's long. There are, like, five people at the registers. But, like, there's, like, five people, like, five registers with people at them. And then there's, like, a line of, like, five other people. And I'm like, oh, bro, I don't mean to be rude. I didn't say anything. But, like, I really want to fucking go. And he's just going, 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 going. And, like, finally, literally five minutes, which doesn't sound too long. But, like, think about it. I'm just standing still for five minutes while he scans seven items. Like, fuck, bro. So that I can identify with what she's saying.
you know, and I'm sorry if that guy ever watches this. I really am. I'm terribly sorry. You were a nice guy, but I fucking, <laughs> I'm not trying to stand on a goddamn line for five fucking minutes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tori, cat calls, if I don't look at you, if I don't speak to you, I'm a bee. I'm, I'm all of these things, but it's like, but if I did give you the time of day, then what would I be? And I don't think like every guy is like that, but it's just yeah, so much so easier and safer to just <laughs> assume. All, yeah, yeah, to assume that nothing is, and it's not a good way to live, obviously, but that's just. Well, because then my question is, is who gets let in? And how do you determine who gets let in? And how do you function? Tim, they Tinder. start the, I guess, relationship in a non-romantic or sexual way? Like if it's no, that's not at it at all. I love this. This is a fantastic question from this girl because she's obviously a little older. Um, it's not like a flirty. Yeah, it's it's just a like a she's not obviously older. And these people don't know how to deal with the question of how do you, how do you find a partner, right? And it's so different. Back then, that was how you did it. Which is why it's so fucking weird to me that like we don't do that now. We don't teach people, especially that we live in an online age, to to talk to strangers in like a nice normal way, or to even find somebody in a flirty way. Back in the day, oh, you look really nice. Like maybe I could take you on a date. That was perfectly normal, and that's where that older woman comes from. These younger people, they don't come from that. They come from the Tinder era, right? And I'm like, I st I kind of like hit the Tinder era as well. I did a lot of online dating, and it was like newer, and everything was behind a paywall. It's fucking insane, right? Okay, Cupid, Tinder, plenty of fish. You know, those are my three big ones. Um, but they don't know how to answer this correctly because their answer is like, oh, you start as friends. No, bullshit. The answer is you engage in casual sex and then you hope you flip a coin, you hope you get lucky. That's pretty much what it comes down to. And <coughs> stuck at the hiccups. It's interesting the generational gap between people and also kind of I'm trying to hold back hiccups the lack of self-awareness from the younger people as to how they actually maintain dating rituals oh. uh, you just meet people yeah. places and they just talk to you yeah and just talk to you like a normal person Bro, hold on somebody said hey anybody know how many bits TTL? Oh, it's a hundred bits or does Papa not do that anymore so what I find really weird about that question is like you you seem to like have stopped by a long time ago and you thought it was 15 bits, right? Which means you, you, I, you haven't been here since the beginning of my stream, like over a year ago. And you're like, does Papa not do TTS anymore? I've been streaming for about a year and or, and change now. And you're like, F and it's totally fine. You don't have to give me any any bits. Like it's no problem. You literally must have been here at the very beginning, at the very beginning of my stream, like of like because I used to have bit alerts at like one bit for fun. And you give me five bits and then 15. Again, you don't have to give me any bits. It's just incredible. <laughs> but you're like, hey, I'm, I haven't been here in a while. This has been over a year, brother. How you doing? This is just kind of funny. All right. Three, I support two, the Me Too movement. One. I mean, I support the fundamentals of the Me Too movement. That's about like uh, sexual assault and stuff, right? Like, I'm a huge advocate for that. Well, at the heart of it, I think that the Me Too movement is about women that have been in situations, whether it's work or personal, where they haven't been in a safe space to speak up or share. And the burden that's on us to protect men or other people by not speaking what has happened to us is actually, can be like PTSD. It's like traumatic to your system. Like I experienced- Why don't I dual stream on YouTube and Twitch? I talked about this in another video that I did earlier today, but it's because I'll lose my partner if I do that and I can't make money on Twitch. But I have been thinking about saying fuck it to my partner on Twitch and just like streaming on YouTube, Twitch, and on possibly even Facebook to pull the boomer audience as well. Going through being sexually harassed. Since I'm like basically a boomer. Harassed. And this happened in 2013 and I still have never come out about it. Statistically speaking, like the number of women who are raped, there's exponentially more than who actually report it. So when I think about the Me Too movement, like there's strength in numbers. You know, when it started, I was like, I don't know if I want to post about this. I don't know how I feel. But what it did do was it gave me the strength to actually share with someone else. I like I'm realizing as everyone's talking, like the reason I'm not in that line is because when Me Too was a big movement, I didn't have the strength or courage to be a part of it. So in my mind, it's like still there of like if I I didn't have the courage to be a part of the movement and I still don't have the courage to stand in that line because that's almost admitting that I've had like multiple things happen, you know? And so it's, you're representing all- Why don't you just stand in the line though, bro? The other women that feel the same way. And yeah. so they see you and they bro, relate to on. you on that. So you're helping other women by saying that. Yeah. Okay. I believe the world would be better if it were run by 
<laughs> I don't know, bro. I don't know. You know, here's the, the would it be better if it was run by women? It's possible. You know, good luck trying. <laughs> You know, here's my thing. I think feminism fundamentally is about valuing, this is my interpretation, is about valuing femininity more. You know, is Me Too specific to women? No, it's not. Or isn't. Uh, but anyway, is valuing femininity more. And what that means is, like, if you notice, jobs that would be generally considered feminine, like social work jobs, you know, daycare jobs, are very undervalued in society. We don't pay them particularly well. Even a social work, a master's in social work may, makes you the same amount of money as an associate's in computer, uh, in like uh, computer whatever design. What am I saying? I used, I was going to, I forget the specific thing. Um, computer science, that's what it is. And I understand that some things are more valuable in different capacities, but we, we criminally undervalue femininity in society. And I think that it is a reason why mental health is taking such a long time to grow because like empathy compassion is a more feminine quality i'm not saying men can't have it and i'm not saying that women can't have masculine qualities either but that is a more feminine thing empathy is a more feminine quality that's how i would generally categorize it uh, and we just don't value these things uh particularly well and so uh yeah i mean <clears throat> would it be better if it was exclusively runaway women i don't really know if that's true um <clears throat> but i think that we need to value femininity more you know yeah. three two one. How is that any different than saying I believe that the world would be better if it were run by men? Like, if we're going to say that on this token, we get that on that token, that's not even balanced at all. Right. I think. I mean, let's be honest, bro. Who's going to kill the spiders? You know what I mean? Like, are you going to do it? <laughs> hey, what are you talking about, bro? Where are all the women bricklayers? I'm not even kidding on that one, bro. Like, women just don't like to bricklay. You know what is interesting, though? It's time for another Papa Gut Ramble. Very interesting. Kind of shot into my mind. A while ago, I was with my wife. We were we, we, back then we weren't married, but we were driving past uh, a construction, like, you know, construction on the side of the road. And there were a bunch of men doing the work, and there was a woman holding the sign. And of course, as the absolute alpha Chad that I am, I said, look at this woman. She's not doing anything. Like, she's getting paid the same as them to do absolutely fucking nothing, you know? Because that's like, you know, it's like what easy mode, you know what I'm saying? Hold it a sign. But my wife says to me, and I, and I said it's because it's, and it's like probably because she's not, you know, probably because she's not really strong enough to do anything else, you know? My wife said to me, turned to me and said, how do you know that the reason that she's holding the sign is because she can't do it um, instead of the men thinking she can't do it? Let me just tell you, when, I, when, I, when that blew my mind, I was like, holy fuck, that is really interesting. And I started to think about dynamics where men will generally jump to, to res rescue women from difficult tasks that they find. And I've done this before in my life as well. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. Like this woman probably is more capable than I think, but because I think she's not capable, um, you know, or because these men think that she's not capable, they don't allow her to do other work. And then I look and I'm like, one of these motherfuckers is riding like a steamroller. And it's like, it's a machine. This motherfucker, she could absolutely, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She could absolutely do that. I was like, wow, that's really interesting. And it's just an interesting perspective. It's just something like, it's just interesting. It's something that you should just think about it. Just think about that. You know, just think about that. It's very, bizarre. it's like, wow, that was a real big eye opener. Also, she's probably bored as fuck because she's sitting there holding a sign. They're all conversing. And, of course, they're, they're construction workers, so they're doing, like, no work. You know what I mean? Like, they're standing there. They're, like, just jerking off on, like, the side of the road. They're, like, like oh. they're just trying to fucking make it last as long as possible so they can get paid as much. So, you know what I mean? And they're just talking and jerking each other up. Probably literally. I don't look at them because I'm disgusted by uh, manual labor work. It's just beneath me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what was the sign for? It was, like, a slow sign. I don't know why they can't just put a fucking stick in the ground. But like honestly, but whatever. What my thought process is is in the current state that we're in right now, then I think that it would be once we get to the place where we are able to raise our children the same way and like women aren't afraid to like go outside and like guys don't have like toxic masculinity, then it's like anybody can run the country and like it's all gonna be the same because we're all raised the same. But I think for right now in the place that we're in, I think women have a better understanding of that. But I So basically what you're saying is like get rid of the men until things are equal. That makes absolutely amazing amounts of sense. Hey, yeah, I think to make things equal, we just have no no men. That makes a lot of sense to me. 
Um, listen, we do. I think that it would be great to have more female representation. I think that's a fantastic thing. I also think it's kind of stupid that we talk about toxic masculinity. We don't talk about toxic femininity. And any single time anybody criticizes toxic femininity or brings up a concept like that, they always say, look, well, well men dominate the society. They created these different things. All these negatives men created fuck you, not true. I think we need to stop perpetuating this idea that women have not contributed to the concept of toxic masculinity. It's a really bizarre thing that we do this. Like men do run society, but it's not like women aren't benefiting in some capacity, right? Like, do you think that like back in the day when there was hunters and gatherers, do you think women were like, I really want to go hunt? Or do you think they were like, you need to hunt or you're not a real man and I'm not going to fuck you? That's probably what they were doing. I, I feel like there should be more of a convert. It should be like, yeah, there's more of like a 50-50, right? This patriarchy that exists, like women absolutely contribute to it historically, okay? There are expectations that women put on men to do particular things. And the then the reverse happens as well. And men do have more of an opportunity uh, to be a little bit more flexible. Or they have the opportunity to be powerful. But do you know how much we absolutely de decimate men? They say, I want to be a stay-at-home dad. They get fucking blasted by women more than anything else, right? They're, a lot of these expectations be like, well, men created that. No, women created that as well. If you're, you're like, it's like, because women will be like, you're not enough of a man. Like, it's not just men. And I feel like it's very annoying because that's what this suggests. It's like, yeah, you know, women just get everything more. Women are like perfect. Dude, shut the fuck up. Women are catty, okay? <laughs> women aren't a great. They're not amazing. They're the Women and men both suck. OK, women are, are like, honestly, like, they contribute similarly to these stereotypes as well as men. It's not just men. It's women as well. Now, maybe it's more men. That's fine. But women do the same fucking thing. OK, if you're walking around with your shirt off and your tits out, do you think it's only men that are like, that's terrible? No, they're sitting there like that's hot. The women are like, yeah, that's disgusting. You shouldn't be doing that, et cetera, et cetera. And you'd be like, well, men created that standard. Do you think that men created the standard that you shouldn't have your fucking fat tits hanging around? No, absolutely not. Bullshit. OK, so, you know, get your shit together, bro. You know what I'm saying, dude? <laughs> I think it's hard because when you have little boys that are growing up that are just not even accountable, or nor should they be for things that men, their fathers might have done or their grandfathers, and then saying like, women should be running the world. It's the same thing where how is that different than in the 1950s, seven-year-old little girls were told men should be in positions of power. Maybe if we had more women in leadership in C-suite, in, 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 in Congress, like if we had more women in leadership, period, it doesn't have to be running the world maybe, right. but if we just had more women right. and women of color, different backgrounds, like if we had more diversity, city in general in leadership around the world, it would be a better place. That's why I, I chose yeah. this one too, because I don't think it should be one, one or the one other. other. I definitely mm -hmm. think that um, when it's only man run, they're missing the rest of society. Right. You can't really operate the world or any government or leadership. Why does she seem confused? <laughs> embracing the second half of society. I think the problem with what some people think feminism is, is that you have to bring people down in order to raise people up, but you don't have to do that. Like you can raise women up to be in positions of power without pushing men down. This motherfucker just told us that we need to get rid of men from leadership, all leadership positions until things become equal. And then she goes off onto this fucking virtuous rant about how feminism isn't about bringing men down to uplift women. Bro, I agree with what she said, but she's not living that. She's not living that. That's not what she really feels. That is just a talking point to her. How That's not actually like your moral values. You seem to actually think men need to take like a, a they, they need to be nay-nayed in order to platform yourself. Fucking crazy. And I think that that is a misconception with feminism. I wonder why that's being pushed. I need the warmth. So cute. Hey guys, I'm. Oh, now kiss. Now kiss. <laughs> okay.